Welcome to Booze Motors. Today we're taking a look at my 1978 MGB GT. Join me as I share the story of its restoration as well as breaking down the costs of taking on your own DIY restoration project. Before we go into the details, let's talk strategy. I decided to do all the work myself, no expensive labour cost, just me getting my hands dirty. Before doing this, I not so carefully assessed the car's condition to see if it was worth restoring. Being complete amateurs to car restoration, my dad and I merely just got the engine running before committing to this giant project. With all the rust we found, what a mistake that was. Now let's get down to business and see what it all cost me. Putting down budget friendly classic car parts can be an absolute nightmare. I spent hours, maybe even days, searching the internet for budget friendly used parts. Among the best finds were this used door for just 50 pound. And then it also got a new old stock tailgate for a mere £125. Just these two items alone have saved me around £850 versus buying them new. Unfortunately, there was several body panels that I couldn't find in good used condition. So here's a breakdown for the cost of those. Two new front wings, £936. We replaced the A-pillar and the dash side inner wing coming to £173 and 97 pence. Apologies about the quality of these old restoration photos, but yeah, you can see the car used to be in a real bad way with an awful lot of tin worm, all of which had to be cut back before I could even start the welding. Luckily, the driver's side was saveable with a small patch at the top. We replaced the four piece silk kit for 345 pound and 92 pence. That includes the outer sill, the diaphragm, castle rail, and then the inner sill. Um, included in that as well, we also did the cross member, joining one sill to the other on either side. On the back wing here, we put a three quarter wing in, which went to the bead here and the inner arch. That came to £166.94. By the time we got to this side, prices had gone up a little bit, um, and we only did the half wing on this side, so that came to here. So that and the inner arch was £193. We also had to change all the floor pans, so that includes the driver's floor pan, the passenger floor pan. Uh, the boot floor pan, the boot floor pan um, supports. While we had all the floor pans out, we also changed the rear chassis legs. Now all those bits came to £169.95, £138, £42.14 pence, and £210 respectively. Whilst addressing the rust, we realised the suspension was quite worn out. The springs were rusted, there was a lot of play in most of the bushes. In addition to this, the car sat at American ride height. To improve the driving experience, I invested £156.56 in Super Pro polyurethane bushes. And then another £211.95 in lowering springs, nylock knots, track rod ends and many other necessary components. The MGB has a very strong engine, having been rebuilt in the 90s. However, that doesn't mean there weren't some issues that still needed to be addressed. We rebuilt the SU carbs here at a cost of £38.41. We also changed the alternator that had broken at a cost of £52.50. You can't see it, it's at the back of the engine, but the starter motor also had to be replaced for a modern upgrade. This cost £66.34. We also had to add a new fan switch there at a cost of £13.75. In addition to that, we also replaced the brake master cylinder, clutch master cylinder, servo as well. Although I can't locate a receipt for those. The interior is a crucial part of any classic car, and like the rest of the car, that obviously needed quite a lot of work. We completely stripped down the seats, fitted new seat foams, chrome eyelets, and opted for seat covers from Poland. The front and rear seat covers cost £242.89 a significant improvement over the original grey deck chair style seats. We also installed new carpet and underlay for £155.29 and covered the original plastic dashboard with leather costing £99.98. After the immense task of welding up the car I then had to tackle the bodywork. I had to address the dents, warps and other imperfections that come with a car of this age. After taking some expert advice, I transformed the look of the car. I used self etched primer over the bare metal. I then used High Build 2K to cover up any imperfections they were in the bodywork before flattening back. I then applied a 2K 
everyday single stage gloss work that you see here. Now, the total cost of the paint supplies came to £328. I sprayed the car back in 2018 for reference. If you hadn't already noticed with the car being an s reg this should have come with the unsightly American spec plastic bumpers, which I disliked. So I decided to swap them out for these nice shiny chrome ones, transforming the look of the car. The chrome bumper conversion kit came to £529.34. That excludes the honeycomb grille though. The honeycomb grille was an additional £174. To get this in fitting correctly I had to chop away the front chassis legs as well as fitting a captive knot for the grill to bolt down into. As they say with classic cars and restoration projects, they're never truly done. So what's gone wrong since hitting the road? We have encountered a few issues. This includes a leaking radiator costing £160.40, a knocking universal steering joint costing £19.80, a seized fuel pump last winter costing £82.21, a malfunctioning water temp gauge costing £60, a snapped choke cable costing £16.81. I swapped out the leaking fuel tank and the engine mounts that used to shake every time I set off from a junction. And I eventually changed the condenser and points for electronic ignition, costing £69.95. A lot I've actually not gone through, you know, we could be here all day going through the mountains of receipts I've got for this car. But in summary, the restoration cost came to a grand total of £8,019.20. Was it worth it? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Personally, I think it was very worth it. The car's been in the family over 25 years and I do not plan on selling it anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching and as always, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video.